Hey guys, today we're in the book of Genesis chapter 5. So we left off with all of Israel believing Moses and Aaron, and today we pick up with Moses and Aaron going to Pharaoh. And they say, thus says the Lord. They are ambassadors. They are speaking for a God. And God of Israel, uh, let my people go that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness, a feast, a festival. This is not exactly what God has said, right? He said, let them go. But now they're saying, let's go out and have a festival with God. But Pharaoh said, who is this Lord? Pharaoh wasn't asking what God is saying this. Pharaoh knows of the God of the Hebrews. He is saying, I do not count the Hebrew God as a real God. He is not an Egyptian God. And so he's saying, who is this God? He's saying, who cares? That little God, no, who can, not a big deal, right? So who is their Lord? Um, and then they said, the God of Hebrews has met, uh, met with us. Please let us go three days journey into the wilderness. Notice they say, we want to travel three days to the place. They do not say how long they're going to stay there, Right. They just ask, we need three days journey there, and uh, that's all that they're asking. They're asking to go, but not to come back. Um, um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord, lest he fall upon us, the pestilence or the sword. He's saying, or God is going to judge us. Please let us go. And the king of Egypt said to them, no way, absolutely not. It's not going to happen. Pharaoh said, behold, the people of the land are many, and you make them rest from their burdens. The same day, Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their foremen that they shall make uh, bricks, the same amount of bricks without straw. Straw is what gives it conformity uh, and gives um, kind of rigidity to the bricks. It allows it to, to cool quicker and faster so it would harden faster. So they have to do the same amount of work, but making it a lot harder. And by the number of bricks, they must keep the same and you shall by no means for they are idle. They're de Pharaoh is degrading Israel. Um, let us go. Uh, therefore, they cry, let us go and offer sacrifice to our God. Let heavier work be laid on the men that they may labor at it and pay no regard to lying words. So here we can see Pharaoh is doubling down. He just didn't say no to God, but he is saying absolutely not. And now I'm going to make it harder for the people of God. So the taskmasters and the foremen of the people went out and would not give them straw. They have to go cut straw for themselves. Um, and now we can even see that the taskmasters are beating the foremen in, in, instead of the slaves. So instead of beating the slaves, he's beating the guys over the slaves, right? And that's what we see in verse 14. And they were beaten and they asked, why have you... Um, why have you not done all your task of making bricks in yesterday as in the past? Then the foremen of the people of Israel, the leaders of the Israel, cried, uh, cried to Pharaoh, why do you treat your servants like this? No straw has been given. And he said, you are idle. You are idle. Now, Pharaoh is mocking Israel to their face, not just to Moses and Aaron's face, but to their own face. And he's doing this for a particular reason. He says, go now and work. No straw will be given. Uh, the foreman of the people of Israel saw that they were in trouble. Um, they met with Moses and Aaron in verse 20 who are waiting for them as they came out with Pharaoh. And they said to them, the Lord look on you and judge. The foremen, the leaders of Israel are now cursing Moses and Aaron. They're asking for God to judge them because they made their work harder, right? So Pharaoh doubled down against God, but what he's doing is he's driving a wedge in between Israel, the Hebrews, the slaves, and their two leaders, Moses and Aaron. He says, because you have, uh, you have made us a stink in the sight of Pharaoh. Well, we're going to see very often Israel for, has short-term memory loss. They said, before you came, Pharaoh liked us, but now, they, now he doesn't like us. Listen, Pharaoh hasn't liked them for many, many, many years, right? Uh, so uh, it's not Moses and Aaron. They just got a little short-term memory. And then Moses turned to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, why have you done evil to this people? Moses is asking a real question. Why, Lord? Remember, 
we never think about God's plan and him working it out. We don't think about the beginning and the middle. We only want the ending. God wanted them released. Okay, then that's what should happen. But God has a plan that's working out. And Moses is asking, why, Lord? Why did you ever send me? He was focused on the problem and not on God, right? We talked about this several Sundays ago. How big your problem is, is how what tells you how big your God is, right? If you have a big problem, then your God is little. But if you have a little problem, then your God is big, right? How much do you have faith in your problem or do you have faith in God? And here we can see Moses had faith in the problem and not in God. For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to his people. Um, he's saying that this problem that they're in uh, is a problem. And Moses doesn't understand, but God understands. God is about to show a nation, Egypt, but all the nations of the world, just exactly how big God really is. And so when you read chapter five, you might say, well, where is where is God in all of this? Well, you kind of see him in five and you'll see him in six and saying that the people are working and working and it's getting worse and worse and they're not getting the job done. Much like us when Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary, come and find rest. We were working day in and day out. It will never produce rest, but God is the one who will ultimately bring rest and he brings rest through his son, Jesus Christ. Hope that makes sense. We will see you uh, tomorrow in chapter six. God bless.